I'm here in this hidden pearl in Warsaw. This is the Jewish cemetery on Ulitsa Okapova. This cemetery opened in 1806, and since then it has served the Jewish community in Warsaw. But it's more than that. It's a valuable historical resource. When so much else was destroyed, during the Second World War particularly, this place survived remarkably. We'll be meeting some of the people who are restoring it, who are keeping it going. So do join me on this exciting episode of Poland Daily History. I'm here in the Jewish cemetery on Akapova Street with the director of the cemetery, Shemizwav Spielmann. Mr. Spielmann, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. Could you just say a little bit about how you came to be the director of the cemetery? Oh, it was about 17 years ago. I, uh, I am the member of the Jewish community of Warsaw. And uh, in 2002, they decided to change the person and the position of the director of the cemetery because of many reasons. And uh, because I worked uh, for a couple of years already for so-called Hevra Kadisha, which is the burial society, the society which helps um, with preparing the bodies for the, for the proper Jewish burial, yes. I, I was given a proposition to, to get this job. And uh, I agreed. And so, since then, for the past 17 years, I, uh, I, wor I work here Excellent. as the employee of the Jewish community of Warsaw director of the cemetery. And so you're responsible for everything that goes on in the cemetery? Absolutely. Everything what's, uh, what's necessary to be done, everything what's going on over here, also for this film, I'm responsible Excellent. for. Excellent. And, the, and, and it's actually quite a big responsibility, I imagine, because it's actually quite a historic monument in itself, and, and it's a that's, huge place as well. That's true. In 99%, this is museum. This is, this is the old, old site. This is the old place uh, of the hundreds of years of Jewish history in, Vash, in Warsaw. But also, this cemetery is still active. There is a new section where, which still serves for the Jewish community of Warsaw, and not only for them. Generally, we are burying, still, still, still bury people, Jew, Jewish, Jewish people who die in Warsaw, and those who died outside of Warsaw, but want, want to, be, to be buried here at our cemetery. And they can come to the cemetery to, as well. That's right. And, and what a large, I imagine a large percentage of your work must actually be involved in trying to keep, restore the cemetery, try and keep it in good order in as much as you can keep 33 hectares right. of anything in good order. You know, this, is, this work is for generations. Unfortunately, without, uh, within the last 60, 70 years, you know, the cemetery was, uh, was neglected in the back, back in 50s, 60s, 70s of, of, 19, of the 20th century. And all this forest grew within that time. Many of the stones were gone, you know, many, many reasons. Stolen, damaged, destroyed, you know. And to bring the view from before the war, which was like a kind of representative, etc., needs, you know, lots, lot, lot of time. A lot of time. Generations and hundreds of human hands. And do you have many people to help you in your work? 
or is it all volunteers? not really i have I, i have two personally i have two physical workers right uh, also also the the employees of the jewish community of warsaw and the rest is based on the sometimes of the group of volunteers who help us you know to clean the section to clean one section 10 sections well, whatever but still uh, even if you if if they make an order over there in two months, they have to do the nature, same job. Nature is very tenacious. And un, uh, you cannot win it, you know, that's, that's how it is. And, and I noticed as we were walking around early this morning, over in that direction, there's a, what looks like a very large, new, modern construction that's underway. Yeah. What's that going to be? Actually, this is the pr f completing the project which was done in, back in the 30s, last century. They, uh, they wanted to make a big mausoleum for the fighters of 1920. Right. under Piłsudski soldiers okay. who f fight for freedom and independence of Pol of, Pol of Poland. Uh, they started to, to make this big project, they never completed. Why? Because the war in 1939 broke up. Yeah. That's why uh, f after the war and until one year ago, until 2018, there were there were just there was just old fence around and nothing and nothing else and the trees inside, so uh, the f foundation of uh, national culture of Poland, the governmental foundation, decided to complete this work, and uh, they, they dismantle everything and they put uh, a new new walls and there's gonna be a huge monument like a memorial over there of course the, the original project wanted to have the, like a uh, uh, grave sites of those soldiers of course they they're not alive for many many years already and they they spread of all all over the cemeteries now so it's gonna be just a site of memorial and nothing and nothing else Hopefully, within a couple of months, they're going to finish. I think I'm right in saying there are probably something over 200,000 people. 250, actually. 250,000. Right. And have you been able to map everybody and identify everybody and identify where their graves are? Is this, oh. is this a continuing project? Actually, it's about to be finished oh, already. Right. Because it's true that there is 250,000 people buried here, but it covers also a mass grave from the ghetto time. It covers some sections which are put on the top of each other with putting another layer of the earth uh, over there. So individual, on the other side, individual, single graves, when you can see, it's about 100,000. Okay. And when I came here to, to work 17 years ago, that time and now uh, also, they are coming every day, tourists from all over the world, and they're asking, you know, they're looking for the graves of their ancestors. That time, I had no idea where to, where to look for, because original documentation was gone, went up in flames in 1943, yes. together with the offices. So basically, we didn't know at all who is buried where. That's why I decided, after a few months of replying the same answer to everybody, that I have no idea, I cannot help because I have no database. I decided to, just for trial, to make one, uh, one section registered. I picked up one section and I registered all the Matsaivas, row after row, Matsaiva after Matsaiva. I liked this, uh, this work, so I decided to do another one. Uh, and next one. And I do it until today. By today, I've registered by myself about 90,000 graves. Right. And they are in my database. Of course, many of the graves are un unreadable anymore. Uh, they carry no, no plaques. They were stolen, broken, whatever. But uh, still, there are about 90,000 graves in my, in my database. About seven, eight years ago, there came one American uh, guy from Chicago, I believe, who liked this, this work I do with with the registration and he decided to speed it up. So he hired a group of students of Hebrew who swept the whole area within a year. They took pictures, they put it online. So that's why there are two databases. One is online, one is, one is mine in my, in my computer. But I have much more grace than they do.